Hi, Matt B here and welcome to M2M, the channel that burns the nonsense. And welcome to this new series simply called Moon Hoax, where I debunk the most common Moonland hoax theories, both old and new, from the era of Apollo from 1969 to 1972. If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon, select all, and you'll be notified when I upload more videos. And if you'd like the video, then please hit the thumbs up. But the best thing for you to do if you comment below in each video, let me know how I'm getting on. And if there's any moon hoax theories that you'd like me to add, then let me know in the comments below and I'll look at adding it. So anyway, let's get on with the video and roll the credits. Number four, there are no stars in the photos on the moon. So the claim is, because you can't see any stars in the photos taken from the moon on the Apollo moon landings, it must be fate. Well, this theory has been around since the moon landing hoax theories began in the 1970s, but again, it is still being used by the conspirators today, and are featured in the notorious book written by Bill Casing, entitled, We Never Went to the Moon. Well, when I say notorious, I mean the biggest pile of excrement ever published in the 20th century. <clears throat> in my opinion. But we're not here to talk about Billy Boy Casing, we're here to talk about why you wouldn't see stars in the photos on the moon of the Apollo missions. During the Apollo era, digital cameras were not available yet, so, to, so the photos they took on the lunar surface were taken with cameras that used film. Film is essentially a plastic strip coated in a light sensitive emulsion. When the plastic is exposed to light, it chemically changes the emulsion and produces a negative of the photo you've taken. Now when taking a photograph with a film camera you have to consider two things. One is the aperture. The wider the aperture the more light is let in to hit the film and the narrower it is the less light it is to let in to expose the film. The other is shutter speed. The faster the shutter, shutter opens and closes the less time the light is exposed to the film and the slower it is set the more light is exposed to the film. A good photographer of this area would always consider their lighting conditions before t taking a photo. In bright conditions, a photographer would pick a small aperture and a faster shutter speed. There's a rule among photographers called Sunny 16, referring to the aperture setting in brightly lit conditions. But in darkened conditions, the photographer would consider using a wider aperture and slower shutter speeds to expose more light to the film. So what would happen if the photographer had both con take conditions to contend with, like the moon and the blackness of space? So, if the photographer wanted to include the stars in the photo, which are essentially tiny pinpricks of light against the blackness of space, he would need to slow the shutter speed and set the aperture wider. But the problem is, the object of the Apollo cam uh, cameras uh, that was used on the Apollo missions was to take photos of the lunar surface. So if he set the camera in this way, this is what would happen to this iconic photo. Overexposed and washed out, because there was too much light exposed to the film. So you see conspirators, this is why you would not see stars on the Apollo photos. I'd like to thank Alan for the help with this video and, and helping me understand a little bit about this subject. So Billy Boy Casing, if you were here to see this video, I'd say your silly theory has just been burned. 